in Brazil, they have this thing called stingray cults, where you can pet the stingrays, and for certain hours a day, you can feed the stingrays. Mm -hmm. They give you a little piece of raw fish or shrimp, and you hold it, and they come and eat it. And I always get scared and drop the fish. But then, are you are you familiar with the squishable? I think they're called squishable. I don't know. They, they basically take everything and make it a giant round toy. Uh -huh. the, baby, the, the baby Yoda one sold out in like 10 minutes. I am familiar with the concept, yes. Can you think of an animal that makes less sense spherical than a stingray? They're flat, but they, they made it... That that doesn't seem... That, that seems like a stingray that's not long for this world. Yeah. And so it was just the most ridiculous thing I'd ever seen, and I had to have it. They gave it whiskers, too. Fair enough. I don't, but... I don't really know what use a stingray has for whiskers. Uh, but yeah, they took the flattest animal and made it round. So this is Steve, Steve the stingray. Peggy's been using him as a pillow. I think you think those are gills. I mean, maybe it's a round stingray. So I'm making no assumptions as to accuracy. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I saw the big round stingray and I was like, I need to have that. Steve, the stingray doesn't want you to feel bad about yourself. <clears throat> Steve the Stingray should feel bad about himself. He's anatomically And I correct. named him just for alliteration, and Mike just pointed out to me that I actually gave him a very dark name, and I didn't mean to. <laughs> oh, Schneider! Tara! Oh, no! I was just going for the alliteration! Crikey! <laughs> the Stingray killed Steve Irwin. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Okay. Wow. Right. Oh, we're gonna get comments. Night in Terra. <laughs> That's not why I named him that. It's just Night it's alliterative. Night in, in Terra. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you accidentally Night fucking went to the dark. Hello. I'm a hippo. <laughs> you accidentally <laughs> went to the dark side there. That was terrible. No, I didn't. I didn't mean it. Well, you did it. Uh, you know what? I don't think when you get to hell, they're not going to sit there and go, did you really mean it? Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And, um, so, like, as I was saying, uh, we all had, we've all had bad days before i've I, and and don't be like i've never yelled at the service we've all yelled at service people we've all been out in public i've done it i'm sorry about it i shouldn't have done it but i've done that but it's a special kind of asshole who who does the yelling and and is is not sufficient that's not sufficient they they have to hold on to that they keep yelling and in this case dude yelled himself into jail which is special um, man allegedly threatened to kill people, blow up Las Vegas airport over $55 baggage fee. And, and th yeah, th this is the special. Okay. So, um, 52 year old Andrew Greco, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Greco, which old enough to know better was arrested. I went to, I went to high school with someone with that name was arrested Friday and faces one count of making threats or conveying false information concerning acts of terrorism and one count of communicating a bomb threat. An arrest report said one day prior, on Thursday, a ticket agent was welcoming passengers to a Frontier Airlines flight from Las Vegas to Reno when she noticed Greco had a bag that she said he, he, said he was going to check in. She told him it would be $55, and the report says he, quote, blew up used, quote, vulgar language and gave her the middle finger. And that's where it should have ended. I mean, it, it should have ended before that. Right. But yes. But you're done. You would no, have been no. just an asshole. The next day, 
Frontier Airlines started receiving multiple threatening calls to its customer service call center. Referencing recordings of the calls, the police report describes some in which the caller identified himself as, quote, Donald Hump and had a, quote, identical voice to Greco and made similar complaints about the company and its luggage costs. The report said the caller made numerous racial slurs and insults to the workers at the call center and said he would go there and kill every single one of them. Police said there Airports were, tend to take that pretty fucking serious. Police said there were non-specific threats to the McCarran Airport, and the caller claimed to have prior military experience and would blow up people in Las Vegas or blow up aircraft. Over $55. <laughs> During the interview with the FBI, the report said Greco told authorities he made the calls to try and get his money back and said he wanted to scare them into a response. Okay. Well, that's not happening. No. Um, that is that is not how you do that. First of all, how, how the hell do you not know by now that the fucking airports are screwing us on baggage fees? That's just yeah. how it is. Yeah. We have all, as air travelers, learned to squeeze all of our shit to a bag this fucking big. Because that's just that's, that the airlines are, are we, we live in a hellscape. Yeah. Um, the service people at the airport have no power over this. No. They are as trapped as we are. They are wage slaves, just like the rest of us. They, ha they have no power over policy. Screaming at them about policy, no. People at the call center, no power over policy. And, you know, even if they did... Threatening their lives. Right. Not a great way to endear themselves to you and make them want to do you a favor. Yeah, it's like, I wasn't going to refund your $55, sir, but then you said you were going to kill me. Yeah. And you make an excellent point, so I'm going to get you that refund. Like, even if they had that power, you're not making them want to help you. Not a bit. Not a freaking bit. I had a woman, when I worked in makeup, scream and yell at me for like 10 minutes about I don't even remember what and tell me that she was never shopping in our store again and she was going to tell everybody in town never to stop in our store again and she knew a lot of people and then on her way out she realized we were having a makeup event and she turned on her heel and walked up to me who she had just yelled at that she would never shop with us again and asked to schedule a makeover and I was like no and it's a it's a super special one to to hold on to that, yeah. For to be like the next day, no, no, I'm gonna make it worse. Well, next up, this one's more flying hysterics from China. All right, look, everybody's got their rituals sometimes when they fly. I understand. I have white knuckled it before. I understand. Um, you believe things. You have that's fine. That's cool. But there's a line. And that line stops about when it comes to throwing metal into the fucking engine. This is not the first time it's fucking happened. Gentlemen scheduled to fly on a Guangzhou Beibu. I think I'm saying that. I'm probably saying that wrong. Gulf Airlines flight uh, in China was detained when staff was alerted. He had tossed coins wrapped in red paper into the plane's engine for, quote, good luck. I have some bad news, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, runway workers noticed coins on the tarmac under the plane's engine before it took off. Staff managed to recover all the coins, but the flight had to be canceled due to safety concerns. All 148 passengers were forced to deboard. Um, this isn't the first time this has happened. Last year, a 28-year-old superstitious passenger threw coins at a plane's engine for good luck. Who decided that was good luck? I guess that's, uh, it might be a holdover for, from, uh, transportation that did not involve airplanes. Yeah, maybe not the engine, though. <laughs> um, you should go wrestle that grizzly bear for good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, I make my own luck. Yeah, you do. It's all fucking bad. What have you done? You should go play in traffic for good luck. 
I saw this great uh, animatic. I say great. It's terrible. I saw this animatic. Uh, Andy Richter actually posted it on Twitter. Um, that someone made a, a used a physics engine and, and a computer to simulate what would happen if you threw a human body into a plane engine. And it, it, it was, it was amazing. The damage that was incurred to the human body. Um, who, who just wanted to know that and decided to spend the time? Have you been on the internet, Tara? Yeah. But seriously, how do you not get this? Like, it, that, that's... It, it. Things flying through the engine are bad. Yes! Bad, bad, bad luck. It's bad luck. I mean, here's... The, the, the worst case scenario is you threw it in there and it got stuck before it actually got into the engine and then they take off and it dislodges and you're in the air and the engine says, yeah. no. I mean, if the good luck you were hoping for was you didn't want to go wherever you were supposed to be going. There you go. Yeah. Mission accomplished. But if you were hoping for like a safe flight, you're really kicking yourself in the dick there. <laughs> going from China all the way to Indiana. Um, we are in America slowly. Well, I say slowly. Some places have gone faster than others. And they should have. We're getting things back to a semblance of the way they were before the pandemic. And I saw uh, IHOP is hiring servers again. We're going back to dining in restaurants. Okay. So I don't understand why this happened. Um, intruders made eggs at Denny's at 3 a.m. Two intruders entered a closed Denny's restaurant and made themselves eggs before being chased away from the eatery by a worker who had been alerted to the pre-dawn trespassing. According to cops, the two offenders first entered the Denny's in Evansville at 2 a.m., went to the kitchen, and prepared some eggs. The duo departed a few minutes later, but returned at 2.58 a.m. and made some more eggs. So. Denny's was closed? Well, yeah, it's, it's the pandemic. Oh, yeah, but I, did. I don't know. Somehow I thought they'd still be 24 hour because it's Denny's. But uh, yeah, they. Uh, it, they didn't lock the door, though. That Yeah, that was a bit. Yeah, the door was unlocked. So people just walked in. Cooked the eggs, ate them, then came back a fucking hour later. It's like, you know what, guys? Those eggs are really fucking good. I'm going for some more eggs. You know what this tells me? I'm no detective. I'm I'm no Sherlock Holmes, but um I have a hunch marijuana was involved here. Oh, see, Just... I was gonna guess I was gonna guess LARP. <laughs> and like the service at Denny's at 2 a.m. is questionable enough mm. that they might not have noticed it wasn't open. <laughs> Uh, no, the, my, 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 this, this, this screams to me, two dudes, yeah. munchies like a motherfucker. This, this is, this is the dark side. This is what the crime they warn you about with marijuana. But like, you know where else they have eggs? The grocery store. You know where else you can cook them? Your own kitchen. But no, th this is, this is what everybody, when they say, oh, it's a gateway drug. It's a gateway drug. The culinary arts. <laughs> <laughs> Before you know it, you'll be you, you hash browns, pancakes. God forbid you might even do sausages. <laughs> well, seriously, it's two dudes. I, I bet you anything. They were just... Oh, the report indicates that Denny's suffered a total estimated loss of $1. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> but I didn't. They didn't take a lot of eggs. <sighs> Speaking of the dark side of marijuana, um, I'm not going to go on all reefer madness on you here tonight, but I don't I don't know what else to call this because I don't think I don't think the reefer was the cause of it. But my God, it played a starring role. Man arrested after headbutting staffers at Southie restaurant 
fleeing crash with trash bags full of marijuana. Oh, it's Bastin. It's Bastin. Southie. South Bastin. South Bastin. How do you like them apples? A uh, fall river man. I think man. this is just a regular Saturday night in South Boston. <laughs> Fall River man accused of violently attacking staffers at a restaurant in South Boston on Thursday before fleeing the scene was arrested after police say he crashed his car and was caught with trash bags full of marijuana. Officers responded to the reporting fight at the Ocean Prime restaurant spoke with a witness who said Jason Wages, 29, and three other people were having dinner at the restaurant when Wages began to harass female waitstaff and other customers. When confronted by other staffers, witnesses says Wages head-butted an employee and called him a racial slur several times, head-butted a second employee, and spit at a third before leaving and threatening to, quote, shoot everyone in the place. I mean, that sounds like South Boston. Police say Wages went on to crash his Mercedes sedan into another car and a building where witnesses say... They saw two people running away from the scene with garbage bags. Uh, wages was located on Dry Dock Avenue. Was arrested when officers searched the bags and found 54 heat sealed bags of marijuana and $8,000 in cash. Okay. I'm sad we don't have a mugshot of this guy. Like, I have a pretty clear picture in my head of what I think he looks like. And I would really like that confirmed. It's a spoiler. He doesn't look like Ben Affleck. Like, I'm confident he's wearing a socks cap. Um, I can't. I, I wish I could find a good picture. I, I, there, there is no. I, I can't find a. Uh, can't find a mugshot. Dang. Um. Oh wait, 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 wait. Is this him? Is this him? No, that's not him. Um. Wait. Let me see. Um. No, that's not him. Uh, so I was like, wait, is that him? No, it's not him. So, when I am in possession of a massive amount of contraband, what I don't want to do is call attention to myself. Right. That is cause, a, cause a ruckus. Because garbage bags full of marijuana in places where marijuana is no, not legal yet, um, that's a good way to no longer have garbage bags full of marijuana. Yeah. Or freedom. <laughs> Astral or Mercedes. says Astral says, so he parked the car and the, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, um <laughs> the double headbutt. I can is, tell you one thing. He is not wicked smack. <laughs> We're gonna have Bostonians in our in our in our fucking be comments. At us. Hey man, this is so funny. We don't talk like that. This will be how I get Chris Evans' attention, and he'll hate me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's what, what, just. Hey man, don't headbutt people. Oh yeah, and headbutt. I have never been in a situation where I've I've been like, you know what? The best weapon right now is my own skull. Yeah. The head I've never understood that as a fighting move, to be honest. Because, I haven't like, either. Even if you manage to knock the other, you're going to ring your own bell, too. Not if you do it right. Like, if your hands are. Did you are, hear that? Not if you do it right, yeah. If your hands are restrained or something, I could kind of understand that. Sure. But not when you're just going to come up to somebody and be like, oh, yeah, wham! When you have two perfectly good fists. Right. <laughs> the, the key is to hit the person with in a softer part of their body like their nose with your big forehead yeah but given all the speeches you've given me about how you can kill someone by driving the cartilage of their nose into their brain that seems like an accidental manslaughter charge again if you do it right <laughs> Don't my look husband, me, ladies and gentlemen. Don't look at me like you're the one who married him. Don't look at me like that. It's like, well, you did this. This is your fault. He can cook. 
Oh, okay, we're, we're just going to descend into madness tonight with these morphs. Hey, Florida's next, of course. Um, I am a world-famous wrestler. Shirtless 19-year-old wielding knives breaks into apartment. Melbourne, Florida. Shirtless 19-year-old man knocks on an apartment door with knife in each hand Tuesday morning before making his way into an apartment, telling officers that he is, quote, a world-famous wrestler. Officers found Dylan Jones inside a man's apartment after responding to a call of a suspicious person. Shit. According to the report, officers were speaking to a resident who described a shirtless man knocking at his door with, quote, something in his hands when a neighbor ran out of an apartment with two steak knives, threw, threw the knives on the ground and shouted to them, He's in here! Prior to running out to the police, the man told officers he found his door was slightly open and the frame of the door was de destroyed. Called 911 when he saw Jones in the hallway, but Jones made his way to the apartment with a knife in each hand. Jones told the victim to hang up the phone before hanging it up himself and move toward the victim while making stabbing motions. Police entered the apartment. When they attempted to take Jones into custody, he said he was a, quote, world famous wrestler and knows, quote, how to fight. Okay, see, when you actually are a world-famous wrestler, you don't have to tell people you're a world-famous yeah. wrestler. It's a general principle of mine that the more you have to tell me how cool, tough, rich, smart, awesome you are, the less of those things you actually are. Because if you really were, you wouldn't have to tell me. I would be able to tell. Right. If you were a world famous wrestler, you'd be like, holy shit, that's Stone Cold. Right. Holy if shit, John Cena. you're a fucking badass, there is a way you carry yourself that will tell me that you're a fucking badass. If you have to tell me every 30 seconds you're a badass, I assume that I can put you down myself. And I really can't fight. Is, is this kind of like, you know, like a puffer fish? Like trying to, to make itself look bigger? Than yeah. its opponent to just make yourself look big. I'm a world famous wrestler. Like my Simba, he chases the girls and he does these fucking battle cries. <laughs> Love him to death. He's a coward. <laughs> that boy is a coward, but he talks a good game. This dude did not. That's that's. No. You're not convincing anyone. You're you're just you're just an asshole, kid. I mean. We didn't really need the mugshot on this one when we knew he was wielding two knives and got taken in and resisted a w arrest and only got tased. Mm. Uh, we have one last one tonight. This one is just fucking nanners. We have all had bad roommates. We have all anyone who's ever had a roommate or more than what you've all had all we've all had the bad one. This one is legendary. Man upset about an argument regarding a dog arrested after barricading himself in Tampa home. It was uh, at the situation started at 1240 a.m. According to police officers, uh, police department officers responded to the area, receiving a report of a man using a BB gun to shoot out windows at the home. And was identified by police as Paul Ezel. Uh, it was reported that Ezel was at the home, armed with a taser, BB gun, mace, and gasoline, supposedly upset about an argument regarding a dog. That's scared to say the homeowner allowed Ezel inside the residence for a few months. However, when he was asked to leave for, quote, causing previous disturbances, an argument started. Then, police say, Ezel threw an unknown object through the front window, which struck one victim in the face. Police say Ezel entered the home and began spraying three occupants with mace. He also broke the windshield, rear passenger side window, and slashed the tires of a white SUV owned by one of the occupants. Then he fired a BB gun inside the home. Uh, no injuries. Before officers arrived, officials say Ezel poured gasoline inside and outside the home. After hours of negotiating, police say a chemical irritant was tossed in the home. 645, six hours later, officers entered the home and took Ezel into custody. What the... 
Look, if someone says, dude, you're causing a disturbance, you lead, we need you to find a new place to live. You don't respond by causing an even bigger disturbance. Yeah, you don't respond with all the violence you can think of. Like, this this dude went full on Tasmanian Devil. Like, the, the fucking spray mace everybody, shooting BB guns, slashing tires, smashing the windows, fucking gasoline. gasoline. Holy shit. Maybe this is why they don't want you for a roommate. Like, which one? Which one of these choices is going to resolve this conflict in your favor? Which one of these things is going to make them say, you know what, you've got a point? You know what, when you threw the brick through the window, I was still mad at you. But when you maced me, I really started to see your point of view. <laughs> Fucking fuck. That's a sentence nobody has ever said. With good goddamn reason. <laughs> he just did all of the things. He didn't just pick one. That's what's yeah. stunning me here. He's like, I could do this, this, this. Oh, hell, why decide? You know, all these ideas are so good. I'm going to do them all. <laughs> Fucking fuck. Like, Jesus Christ. I mean, at least you have a place to live. Unfortunately, it's called jail. Yeah, yeah. You, you did find a new, you found a new place like that. I will. Yeah. In this economy, wow, that's impressive. However, a little bit of an asterisk on the end yeah. of that. Um, not exactly high value real estate. Like food's not great. Mother, just and I love that he he tried to to be to negotiate with them. Like you're coming from a position of strength, right? Like at that point, your only move is to light yourself on fire. Yeah. I'm not so saying one way or the other, you're not going to live here anymore at the end of this. I mean, all of these, I don't think he understands upside because every choice he made, he picked the, the, like, okay, I sprayed you all with mace. That helps me. Wait. Okay. I'm going to smash your car. That help. I'm covered in gasoline. This now is what happens when you have an underpants gnome for a roommate. <laughs> <laughs> mace <laughs> everybody. Phase two, phase three, profit. <laughs> Set a couple Ooh. of fucking steps there. I guess the, the the first thing we've we've learned tonight is when you're engaged in a conflict with another person, try and figure out how to reach your desired outcome. Yeah. Don't just do whatever the fuck pops into your head. Yeah. Because you can't just wing this shit. We've learned if you are a world famous wrestler, you don't have to tell people you were a world famous wrestler. Strange but true. Uh, we've learned that maybe if if you were carrying so much marijuana, you have to keep it in garbage bags. Calling attention to yourself with multiple headbutts and slurs, not a maybe great plan. Maybe you shouldn't be out grabbing the waitress's ass and then headbutting everybody like low profile. Like seriously. We need a better class of criminal. Um, we've learned that, you know, th they are right. Marijuana does lead to crime. It's just crime that involves cooking. It's just weird, sad crime. Yeah, weird, sad crime. Dude just showed up, made some eggs. Um, we've learned that throwing metal into a jet engine is never good luck. Unless you're trying to crash a plane, in which case, good job. Um, and finally, we've learned yelling at service staff rarely, if ever, accomplishes your goal. Continuing to yell at the service staff until you have committed a felony. Really not going to get that refund. No. We also learned that stingrays are not round. I, I did, did we need to learn that? I promise you somebody out there did. Or somebody out there in the YouTube comments is going to find like one obscure species of stingray that's round and lecture me about it. And that's that that's how we know no one likes them. 